Hello, welcome to Library Grindhouse. The only ticket you need is your library card. I'm Jesse. And I'm Leah, and today we'll be reviewing the 1985 cult classic, Reanimator. All right, so this, this movie is based on the H.P. Lovecraft serialized novella slash short story, Herbert West Reanimator, which we'll cover in a special episode. Uh, so we'll stick to the movie, I think, for this review. I will try really hard. I read, I read, I read it, and yeah, I'll, I'll try really hard. <laughs> I have, I have some thoughts. Okay, I have all right, thoughts. all right, yeah, no, it's uh, Lovecraft. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, let's speak of Lovecraft. He's usually associated with the cosmic horde monsters that make you insane if you even just caught a glimpse of them. So, a take on Frankenstein kind of seems a little pedestrian. Yeah. Um, however. Um, when you combine director Stuart Gordon, producer Brian Yuzna, so it stars Jeffrey Combs and Barbara Crampton, you come nowhere close to pedestrian. Like you cannot possibly make something pedestrian when you have these, these people in your movie. Um, cause I've seen this and from beyond and oh my gosh. I've never seen from beyond, but I will you say. Were, oh gosh, you haven't? Oh. No, I have not. Oh, okay. But I will say that even like from the get go, from the opening get go, um, at first I was like, German? Switzerland? Where are we at? Zurich. Yeah. Yes. But uh, it's not for the faint of heart. I will say that. Yeah, and I thought it was interesting because, like, I mean, Switzerland I don't necessarily think of as a hotbed of, like, medical research or something yeah. like that. I do think of it as being neutral, like, obviously, banking secrecy, you know, troubling neutrality during World War II. I also think of the Orson Welles quote from The Third Man. In Switzerland, they had brotherly love. They had 500 years of democracy and peace. And what did that produce? The cuckoo clock. Basically, all they've given us is um, the cuckoo clock. Um, and I think of Germany as having the more deeper medical history, but I think they didn't want to have it tied possibly to like Nazi experimentation, that kind of stuff. So of it makes thoughts. sense to have it in Switzerland because, I mean, I, you know, I, I guess you could think of Switzerland being a place where maybe you could do research like this? I yeah. have a question mark. I don't know. I, I do think it has ties to, oh, what's that famous doctor? Mengele? Yeah. yeah. So that's kind of where I was like, which I was surprised they, I thought that they were going to use that as his doctor, or like a passed down generation of like the doctor he was studying for, under. Oh, but, there? Yeah, but instead they said Hans Gruber. Hans Gruber! Alan Rickman? <laughs> this should interest you, Carl. He worked with Hans Gruber. <laughs> Right? The, I was like, did they really, did they choose that? I, what? What? Die? Before, this is pre-Die Hard. Die Hard? This what? pre-Die Hard. And then I was just like, too soon. And then I got really sad. And then, yeah, this movie brought me back up because of the hilarity of I was just like, it just said Hans Gruber is amazing. <laughs> but yes, Dr. Gruber <laughs> uh, has Gruber. been mentoring this Herbert West guy. Um, and we find these people walking down a hallway with a lot of purpose. And we hear these cries and screams coming from this office. They asked for Gruber, they asked for West before knocking down the door and discovering West over Gruber's convulsing body. With He's got syringe. an empty syringe, empty syringe. Yes. And, uh, and then Gruber stands up, his eyes explode in some bloody gore and it's amazing. And his like, physical effects are awesome. His face is turning purple. And like his, his head, forehead's expanding, yeah. like it's awesome. Um, yeah, so that's when I immediately was just like, okay, not for the faint of heart, gotcha. So uh, I probably should give you a heads up this movie. Uh, no, no, I don't. I don't mind that at all. Though I mind the very almost too realistic gore. This wasn't that. I mean, it was realistic. It wasn't like campy gore. Oh, it didn't look like latex. Yeah, right? but but it was it was like just that right amount. Where I'm like, okay, I know that's not real, but right. you. But it's, it still gave you. It's still gross. You, it's still yeah, gross it still gave it. you that kind of. And then. I mean, and I'm sure yeah. we're going to be talking about, but they're medical students, so you can imagine what else sure. they see. So, yeah, so that's when I'm like, okay, I have to, like, get my stomach in check. I made sure to... Yeah, I didn't um, have a heavy meal while watching this Well, movie. yeah, because I was going to eat while I was watching it, but oh, okay. I thought better right. of it, and Good. I had my soy beef bowl beforehand, which would have been horrible eating during this. Probably, yeah. uh, texture-wise. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So. Um, so Wes is accused of murdering Gruber, but he denies it saying... I gave him life. Oh my gosh, Combs, man. Academy Award. Uh, I, I yeah. think the dude needs to have like a special achievement Oscar or something for scenery chewing. Uh, I agree. And he has the perfect look. He has that dead pan look again. Also somewhat boyish. Like, yeah. like I've seen I've seen both sequels to this movie. Uh, I which not. I mean, Brighter Animator, as of right now, this recording is on Canopy and Beyond Reanimator, which I thought was leaving December. 
is technically still on Hoopla. Ooh, so okay. I'll put links uh, for those movies. Um, but anyway, it's they don't get any less wild. They're not as good. But yeah. uh, when I recall, yeah, there's things that were just like, oh gosh, really? Like, yeah, there and, and beyond I had a thing where I'm just like, wait, they did what? So then we cut to the opening titles and credits. It has a very psycho Bernard Herrmann type score with yeah. the strings. Like I was like, this is cool. I dig the vibe. And I love the glowing green title um, with the, and also the um, Saul Bass style anatomy illustrations over the credits. It was very Hitchcockian in so many ways, which I, I but it was also very tied into what this movie was gonna be. Yeah. That I really appreciated like the the homage of it. Like it didn't feel like a cheap ripoff, like it looked classy in a way. And like we mentioned during the Jack Frost review, um, which if you haven't seen it, watch it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, plug in. <laughs> um, I do, like usually I skip over whenever they have credits at the very beginning of movies, I tend to skip over them. I'm sorry, but it's like, you know, a solid two to three minutes of my life that whatever. I get you. But I haven't been with these movies because I feel like back in the 80s and the 90s, their credit scenes were, were just so good. Like, they were going were, for something. Yeah, it went along with the theme. It was like amping you up to get ready to watch this movie. And it was, yeah, and anyway, and I feel like we just don't do that anymore. Yeah, you kind of have a sense really of wonder sad. of like, where's it going to go? Yeah. What's happened? What just happened? What did I just see? Yeah. Like, and like, like you said, the colors were super bright, and I was trying to read like the words on all. You know, it was sure. it was very it was tastefully done. Yeah, and it could have been really garish. I mean, it kind of was, and, and it was the eighties, but it, it it still ages well. Like it doesn't yeah. it kind of it's kind of like a fine wine. It actually still yeah. kind of comes across as refined and artful. Yeah, I completely agree. Even with though it's like day glow colors, like it's shocking how well like the credits are just like ooh, this is like totally eighties. Well, I feel like whenever you see. Or Go hear about minutes. a mad scientist type movie, which obviously the title's Reanimator. I mean, you kind of understand there has to be some sort of mad sure. scientist like thing. I feel like the bright neon colors are like, oh, yeah. you know, they're what's bubbling on the Bunsen burner and all of that good stuff. So I was like, oh, well, they have all the bright colors on the skeletons too. It just all mixed together, and then very eighties, of course. Yeah, but again, it doesn't. It doesn't feel aged though. Like no. it doesn't. Yeah, it just doesn't. It's not like a. Like some movies are a total time capsule of their day, whereas this movie, I'm just like, the colors are the 80s from the credits, but it just doesn't scream 80s yeah. or like and really super dated. Really, the characters didn't look very 80s. I feel like the characters held up even with what they wore. I mean, and it helped that didn't... they were mostly like at the hospital. Yeah, like, like yeah. Or whatever. But you didn't really see like the big hair, or you didn't see like the, the bright makeup or anything like that. It was very. They, they kept a relatively timeless quality. Yeah. I think it helped that it was like the middle of the 80s, like we weren't reaching the hot height. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know if that's maybe helped because we were, weren't totally in the 70s. We're kind of in that middle liminal. But area. even still, you still didn't even have like the 90s grunge look or anything either. Like it was very, and, I mean, you did make a fair point. They are not saying that this means anything necessarily, right. but they are medical students. Most of the time they are either in like lab coats or in a suit and jacket because they're, right. yeah. So it held up really well. I was, I was very surprised. It wasn't what I was expecting for an 80s movie, a mid-80s movie. There's many reasons why this movie is still enjoyed by a lot of people. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so now we're at the Miskatonic Medical School in Arkham, Massachusetts, and Miskatonic and Arkham are both Lovecraft creations, so remember that, Batman fans. Mm -hmm. Arkham. I did not know that until I read the short story, and I had to have a Google moment. You were like, like, what? what? <laughs> this is where Arkham Asylum comes from? What? They ripped it off. <laughs> that is right. And isn't Miskatonic, isn't that something in Arkham? Miskatonic. Or Miskatonic, isn't that a Faulkner? Didn't he steal that? Who knows? Maybe not. I don't know. You're a Faulkner person. I'm not, I am, so. but... <laughs> Not, not my jam. <laughs> I need to figure it out someday, but not right now. <laughs> All right, so we meet Kane, um, who is trying to resuscitate a woman with, a ch with chest compressions. The doctor tries to use a paddle to no effect and calls the woman dead, but he refuses and goes back and tries to heroically try to bring her back to life just through mashing on her chest. You have to the doctor tells him to stop. So we get this idea that this guy's got a messiah complex of some sort. That he, he, he just he needs to save he it. He wants to save people. people. You can tell that that's why he is a medical student. Like, he is there to actually, which is a good thing, I guess. But you are right. It's a good thing to a degree. Yeah, and it's, I mean, how much is it glory for him? How much is it actually helping the person? It's true. How much... Like, is it just his ego? Like, he doesn't want to lose somebody because it looks bad. Like, you get the idea that he does genuinely care. Like, yes. the actor does convey that he is distraught, that this person died, not for himself, but for the person. 
if not their family or whatever. I mean, yeah. You don't really see him having to address any of that. Um, he's mainly assisting another doctor, so it's not like that'd be his responsibility. He's still a medical student, but you can tell he's. I mean, he in the chest compressions, he is going for it. Right? Yeah, yeah. And, and the doctor says doctor is admirable, but it's a waste of time. And so, and a good doctor knows when they've done everything they can do. And so, obviously, the fact that he decides he'd like to do more starts to make sense. Yeah. But he's tasked with willing to buy the more. And the guard outside the board mentions Dr. Hill as the autopsy room locked, which I don't know why, because he opens the doors, they don't seem to be locked. I'm not entirely clear on why he mentioned You know, the doors they mentioned were... that it was, it was locked during like two different scenes, but during this particular scene, it wasn't. But the guard said it was locked. He yeah. simply said he's locking the doors. Don't know why they keep locked doors around here. Nobody wants in, and ain't nobody getting out. And he just, and he just walks opens in. the door, I'm just like, but... What did that mean? Either. I don't know. Or maybe it was setting up for later on. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know. But I do want to give a shout out to that guard. The guard is pretty special. It's great. Um, <laughs> the morgue, so the morgue's absolutely stuck with dead bodies. I'm like, what is happening at this hospital? And they're also not in, which I don't know if this is a time period thing, but most of the time when you think of morgue, yeah, you yeah. think of like the little the chambers trees. that they have in the freezer for lack of a better word sorry but I'm that's not those are accurate i keep reading conflicting things about what actually uh hospital morning looks that? like if they even have like those or if they're like that or it's not just like a tv or, exactly that thing. looks good that in tv or something but in this they just wheel them into another room and the room doesn't even i mean they don't seem like they're cold it doesn't seem to fit i mean the door them. the door's latched yeah so and you get the idea it looks like a big freezer door so you're supposed to be like oh yeah it's a freezer but the interior, the walls, it looks like a hotel conference room, yeah. um, which is just like, it looks even looks like the, the expandable walls, like in a yeah. theater room, just like, no. Okay. But I do like that the operating, there's lots of room, there's lots of space, there the hallway, like they built sets that are just like, and the, the dollies they can do in that hallway are so cool that I'm just like, even though they're just pushing and pulling the camera, there's just an effect to it yeah. that I really like. I'm just like, wow, this actually like just looks cool. Yeah, I and, agree. Uh, I was appreciating that the technique there. Um, so anyway, the uh, Kane seems freaked out by all the bodies, which is weird. Uh, I agree. He just doesn't want. To, I don't know if he just doesn't want to touch them, or maybe this is supposed to be like he is. Maybe he's just scared of death. Which I guess, I, but he was he was I, literally wheeling the body down to the moor. It's true. I put that in my notes, though, because I was like, maybe that's why he kept on doing the chest compressions. Maybe that's why when he went to the moor, like, he's pushing her aside and somebody's, uh, uh, I don't know, you a cadaver, I don't know what you would call him, but somebody who's dead already underneath in the moor, like, it's arm sticking out. Right. And he keeps pushing the arm back, and then, like, he, like, wipes his hand and like he just you could tell he like, t stays away from it he doesn't want anything to do with this dead body and i'm like well maybe he is terrified of death maybe he does not like death at but all but you're even the end of the movie because there's nothing else in the movie that would tell say that he is well i thought that's why that he would start i think he, he wants he wants to save life but i don't think he fears death it's true but i don't know i don't know but anyway, we then we see Dr. Hill doing an autopsy, and he burns a hole in the body's skull and does like a Q-tip sample, and I was like, that's First I thought that's he was lasering someone's eye, just from the angle, and I was like, laser eye! Oh! But yeah, doing the lobotomy, essentially. Well, no, well, no I mean, they're they're dead. So yeah, well, yeah, 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 yeah but... Yeah. Yeah, I know. Uh, spoiler alert. Anyway. No, and I thought that's what a lobotomy was. I thought no matter what, like, we're dead. Isn't it always a lobotomy? Uh, a lot of is a specific procedure that's done on the brain to like um, lobotomize somebody. Oh, see, I always thought lobotomy was the act of like drilling a hole into the skull. I mean, there's craniotomy, which is drilling a hole in the skull. Oh, yeah, I think, but that. the, I mean, but the, and that can be done to relieve pressure in the brain. Yeah. Or things like that, the person would still be alive. I think it'd be called something like that versus a lobotomy, which is a specific procedure to like snip, I think, certain like neurons or whatever yeah. to basically make the person a vegetable for lack of a better term, yeah. which is awful um, and was done for awful reasons. Yes. Uh, and many times, which is terrible. Uh, anyway, it's a whole it, other yes, thing. Uh -huh. I, I, I didn't know that. I always thought it was uh, just lobotomy no matter what if you were drilling a hole in Not that I'm aware of. I could be wrong. Um, I am not a doctor, nor do I play one on TV <laughs> or this show for that matter. So anyway, yeah, no, it's... Uh, the, so we get the hint that there's he's got some high-tech gadgetry, which yes. lasers 
very 80s. I remember seeing that. Ooh, lasers, high tech. And, um, <laughs> So Kane's introduced to Wes there, uh, who will be working with, and apparently Kane is an up-and-coming prospect in terms of medicine, so he's allegedly a good up-and-coming doctor. Um, and so when he asked Wes what he was studying in Switzerland... What were you researching? Death. 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 <laughs> I just, man, I love Jeffrey Combs in this movie. But you and can then, tell, too, that Herbert West kind of has a complex of himself where he likes to be the smartest person in the room, which we'll get onto a little bit later. Oh, absolutely. Well, I don't, I mean, even right here, he, he's very, like... I don't think he needs to be the smartest. He needs, like, when it comes to his area of expertise, he will not be less than anybody else. Yeah. He will, he, no one, when it comes to this, I'm sure I'm, other things that aren't his specialty, he wouldn't necessarily feel like he has to be the smartest in the room. He's not going to go into a sports bar and have to feel like he's the one that knows everything about the stats. But I feel like he'd be the type whatever. of person that would, like, curb the conversation towards his topic, and all of a sudden he's the smartest person. I mean, fair enough, but I'm just, <laughs> you know, I, I gotcha, I gotcha. I don't know why I'm just I'm arguing with you on this yeah. side. <laughs> <laughs> Get it right, Leah. No. But this is where I found, holy crap, Wes worked with Hans Gruber. And this is pre Die Hard. This is where it is. Uh, I heard you work with Hans Gruber. I'm just like, oh, what? I was cracking up when oh, I heard that. Well, at first, so good. I couldn't remember where I heard the name from. I'm like, was he a famous doctor? Did they just like plug somebody? And then literally it just came to me. And I was like, Alan Rickman. Wait. It's just, it just was the holidays, Lee. You didn't watch Die Hard? I didn't watch Die Hard during that. I was too busy. I was watching Rare Exports and Jack Frost. And I, I didn't watch that stuff and I caught Die Hard. I didn't, which, yeah, I don't know why. I also got into an argument with my family about whether or not it was a Christmas movie, so. We've made it a Christmas movie. It should be a Christmas movie. It should definitely be a Christmas movie. My kids in the new, newfound love of Harry Potter, I can't wait for them to see Alan Rickman in this movie. I'm just like, oh, when are they old enough to watch this movie? Let's see, I was like 12 or 13. I'm like, oh, so it's not in a while yet, but I'm just like, oh, they're gonna, it's gonna blow their minds to see young Alan Rickman playing Hans Gruber in his breakout now? role. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. And a sheriff of Nottingham and Robin of Prince of Thieves, probably one of the best parts of that movie. Oh, man. Yeah, I love it. I love Alan Rickman. Great stuff. Like I said, too soon. We'll forever be too soon. Pretty much, yes. I need to rewatch Galaxy Quest. Galaxy Quest is so much like fun. Like Ross Hammer. So much fun. Uh, yes. Um, but Dr. Hill apparently gets the university a lot of grants. So I'm like, oh, he's got some pull. Okay. But Wes is absolutely unimpressed and tells Hill, I mean, I assume Dean, okay, so it is the Dean. I, is at the time, dean. I had to assume it was the Dean because they didn't really introduce him yet. Yeah. To his face that his work is interesting, but derivative of Gruber's work. I'm like, nice start, Wes. Yeah. Way to go. You're really going to make a name for Already yourself. By, there. Yeah. I'm just like, wow, not only in front of the Dean, you are now dismissing their biggest grant getter. I'm like, Dude, that's not going to go over well for you, man. Well, the biggest like, grand getter, and then as you find out a few months later, his one of his professors. So it's like you're literally poking someone who's going to be giving you a grade in medical school, which I'm assuming is a lot of money. Like he just doesn't seem to care. He is he knows his stuff he, when he it comes has to zero death. F's to give, uh, not, he, <laughs> he is yeah. All right, so Kane's looking for a roommate at his apartment at six 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 Darkmoor. I'm like, man. Really? Like, yeah, again, who would ever live? I don't know. I mean, like, there, not even a are street, people, just dark but... moor. Like, why not moor? Like, if he lives out in the middle of a field, like in a cottage or something in Massachusetts? Anyway, um, in the room, it must be quiet and keep regular hours. Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay. So, me and his girlfriend, Megan, and things move very quickly. Um, well, we find out that they're engaged, though. I know, but like, they're smooching and no, just like, no, oh, I agree. hi, okay. I agree with well, that. I that... thought you meant like, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, I thought like... you meant like, hi, nice to meet you, Pete. Um, well, and that's how it is for us. Yeah. As viewers, true. it's just like, oh, okay, cool. Um, <laughs> well, and then I did not like her line where she was like, you know, once you become a doctor. Oh, no, that's the thing. Like, he, she won't marry Kane until he becomes an MD. Uh, yeah. And just like, mm, well, it's just a little... Like, you have to prove to me that you're going to be pulling in the bucks. Yeah, I kind of had that feeling too. I didn't after a while, but right then and there, I was just like, hmm. Yeah, I'm like, really? Like, so you got to make sure you're you're maintaining your lifestyle that you're familiar yeah. with. Yeah. Dad being the medical school dean. Mm. But then afterwards, I, I did enjoy the sort of comedy, whatever that's called. What's it called? When they put comedy in there to make it funny after kind of a serious moment. Like de escalate kind of thing. Like yeah, kinda... but it's it's like they they put comedy in there in order yeah, in order to calm everything down. Oh gosh, Leah. Anyway, I, I will think of it. But I love the fact that that then Daniel 
all of a sudden does like the raise up and he's underneath under the, the sheets. sheets. I just thought Halloween. I mean, no, I didn't think Halloween. <laughs> just like, that's what I have in my notes. I didn't like, think Halloween. I just thought, I was like, oh, uh, so this, they're foreshadowing something. Or, but he did it so well. He actually did it really well. And he pretended to like chase after her like he was a zombie. And it, it was, was like this little cutesy thing. It was a little weird for me. Uh, I, I thought was it was like, a cutesy thing. I just was like, I don't need to be seeing this guy. It's like, I, maybe this is your cute thing. I, I just, I Made don't. like an uncomfortable, like a little bit too intimate. I'm I'm gonna step out. <laughs> you guys just let me know when you're dressed. And when you're just, fair, when you're, yeah, yeah. Not, when you're not doing your little whatever you guys like to do. Your little you know? thing. Yeah, like that. I just I, don't get it because I'm outside the relationship. I thought know? it was adorable. I was just like, oh, look at him. Well, I get it. I just <laughs> the way he kind of was pushy with her in the hallway with the PBA, and then that was a fun switch. We're going no, no, no to yes, yes, yes. I, I, I thought that was a fun juxtaposition. <laughs> But then it's just kind of like, and she's like, stop, stop. And he keeps going. I'm just like, I just get a little but uncomfortable was, with But that. she was doing like the giggly thing. I which know she could was. Also be, I mean, people or she's just like, I'm uncomfortable. I'm just going to giggle because I don't true. want to like, think that I'm uncomfortable with the way I am. That's and, true. And I did get that, that vibe. Um, but still. Because it is Barbara Crampton and she's kind of notorious for, sure. yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of like, I don't know. It's just one of those things where I just, I just don't lie. I just, just like. I didn't find it charming, I guess. Like, it wasn't clever or, I don't know. There's nothing, there's something more. It's just like, I don't, I don't know why he was doing that. I'm like, why were you pretending to be a ghost? Like, she wasn't saying that she, you know, I don't know. Because she had to go. She had she was to leave. Afraid of spirits. I think he just wanted her to, like, stay. Yeah, but movie. you pretend to be a ghost to do that? Like, I was trying to be a zombie. And he was like, I'm going to eat you. I guess. I guess it's a little <laughs> bit of foreshadowing. I don't know. I don't know why I felt uncomfortable with your role play, but I do love that they, she goes to the door to open it, like, I gotta leave, and then Herder West right there. And he's standing there in all of his steely, steely eyed glare, or not glare, he's not really glaring, just steely eyed blank face, ready. Yep. You're looking for a roommate. <laughs> yep. And uh, I have a feeling, and he's there to be about the roommate thing, because the thing we saw the 666 on is saying he needs a roommate for the apartment because he's poor. And uh, I have a feeling that um, West will not be a quiet or a regular hours type of roommate. I just get the no. vibe. And that. I also love the fact that Megan has her intuition. She's like constantly like, no, 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 wait a second. Before. Yeah, don't do this. She gets an Daniel immediate. Daniel instantly is like, vibe. yeah, sure. Especially but I also get the idea that cause she asked the question. So why did you leave Switzerland again? Because yeah. I think she must. I was like, she must have overheard her dad That's talking true. to somebody of just like. I understand that he left under like crazy circumstances, or you know that people are thinking he killed his mentor, but but his, but his research or whatever I think could be could get us a lot of money and like a notoriety, and I think we should give him a chance. And she probably overheard it or conversation. So she she obviously goes to Grant dinners, yeah, uh, for some reason, <laughs> and. Uh, so I have a feeling that she ha knows more about Wes than Dave does. And so that was kind of interesting. Yeah. That was a good idea. I like that she... She was... It, it, it's, it's more than just intuition because she she knew to ask a smart question. That is true. It but wasn't she, just like a... She was of, just like, damn, I get a bad feeling about this guy. It was actually like but specifically... He is kind of a creepy, like, just he gives off that sure. vibe right away. Absolutely. Where I wouldn't no. be like, don't say yes right away. It's Jeffrey Combs. <laughs> I'm sure he's a great, wonderful guy. I don't want to be in a room alone with that dude. Yeah, like, he has just, that. He's got a vibe. He has that like, stare down. Again, I'm sure he's a wonderful man. Maybe he's not. I don't know. But it's just one of those things where. It's very hard yeah. to get that stare where you have just a blank look on your face, but you can still look highly intelligent where you're like, something is going on behind those eyes, but you are not giving me any hint as to what is going on. Why it's a shame he wasn't does, Yeah, he does that perfectly. He is a very good actor when it comes to that. And he's a scenery chewing legend. <laughs> I mean, oh my gosh. So Wes needs a basement. Uh, Mary's very unsure. And yeah, like she has, tries to get Wes to reveal more, but he only says he could learn no more there. And uh, Tip, if you are looking for a roommate and they immediately ask if you have a basement and they want to go see it and it's a dark, dingy place and they say it's perfect, don't let them be your roommate. Just tip for flags. Yeah. Tip, tip for the day. Absolutely. <laughs> so now we're in Dr. Hill's class. Um, since he's going to be their teacher, and he's opening the cranial cavity of a cadaver and makes a joke about it being like peeling an orange, which I'm just like, I get that there's like dark humor in medical situations, yeah. but 
Oh my gosh. Yeah, and that that's the part where I was like, okay, yep, still happy that I ate oh, before gosh, that, it's moved. The, the, like, the sound effects. Yeah, and they, that, just, they just they do such exactly. a good job. And there's like the tension, like you can tell it's hard to do, or you're making a good job of pretending that's hard to lift that skin up. Like oh. comedic relief. I thought that they were going to do comedic relief right then and there too, um, okay. and have like somebody pass out because I do have a friend who's in the medical field, and she says that people will when they're showing these movies or they're working with cadavers, people will just pass out. Yeah, I'm glad I never got to that like point. even in the medical was, like just briefly for med. I'm glad I, I wouldn't have made it that far. No, I wouldn't have either. I I would have instantly just been in it. But they didn't do that. They had all these people, and they were like really studying and listening to them. Yeah, I guess no they're really pretty far a, along in things. Yeah, so. no one really had like a gross face or anything. I don't know. Yeah. I, I mean, I guess it's a good thing, but he already has a position from earlier when he stated that the human brain can only remain viable for six to 12 minutes. Six to 12 minutes. I love his emphasis on the, so, after the heart and lungs cease functioning before releasing an irreversible conclusion. Mm -hmm. And that's when, which I love how they did a close up of Jeffrey Combs and Mr. Herbert West, and he just breaks his pencil. And I'm like, that's such like a uh, move to a teacher in a small group of class when you just make eye contact and you just break your pencil. Even though it's a little move, it's just like, ooh. I've always... I, mean, I, was, I went, my bachelor's was in teaching, and if somebody did that to me, I just would have, ooh. <laughs> I just, I was just like, if I was a teacher though, it, like, I mean, when I watched this, I got, I got, like, it was a big deal when this movie came out on DVD because it was this deluxe two disc set that I purchased. And I'd never seen the movie. It was one of the first movies I bought, sight unseen, of just like, I kept reading all these articles, like, this movie's amazing. Movie's you have to, great. you gotta buy this DVD. And I was like, okay, I'll buy the DVD. And I'm so glad I did because it was crazy and had good extras. Anyway, but when I watched it, I'm just like, why does that teacher be like, why did you do that? Like, you're not happy with your pencil? Like, like, are you just... You're really hurting yourself. Is it a nervous tick? Like, I don't understand why that... Was that an insult? I feel like it would have driven me nuts. Only for the direct eye contact. Because it's almost like, if you, I mean, you've heard that, I'm going to snap you. Like, you know what I mean? It's almost he's he's coming at him. That's, just, like, that's like a punk out. Like a... <laughs> I don't know. I, I just could see the like the, the naked gun airplane one where it's like because he gets out another pencil immediately and is ready. And I can see like at the end of the scene him getting up and just a whole bag of pencils, like just pencils like spilling out of his bag. Like Take he had a whole that, bag Dr. of pencils Hill. ready to break. Like I could just I could have seen like a parody version of it of just like uh, so it just it didn't have the effect for me as I wanted to. But it, obviously Hill is the guy who Hill has a huge Oh, he's, a great huge he reaction to class. it. Yeah, he stops class. He's totally rattled. And so, you, obviously, even if I wasn't clear on, like, how is that an insult? It uh, obviously is played well as yeah, one. And yeah. he just is so angry. And then Wes Brates Hill, who then storms off because he's questioned his authority in the middle of the classroom, which I'm just like, if you want them to respect your authority, <laughs> you don't just run off like a punk after getting challenged. Like, it's true. Like you would, especially if you're like an eminent in your field, you'd, you'd be like laying out the details. Like, yeah, okay, you is, really want to challenge me on this? Like, blah, 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 Here's blah, the blah. science behind you lay it. it out. Here I mean, it is. As the teacher, as the practicing physician, the yeah. teaching physician, you would make your case. You're like, okay, you get your stuff, I'll get my stuff. Well, let's lay it out there. I'm pretty you really sure want to debate me on this? He kind of makes his case. Well, I, well, I, <laughs> I think I think he also knows that I, I think he called his bluff, and because yeah. he says it's directed to Dr. Gruber, I think he knows that yeah. this might be something he doesn't know. Yeah. And so anyway, now we're at the grant meeting, which I thought was like Thursday, so I guess we've missed a few days of stuff. I don't know. Um, celebrate another grant win for Dr. Hill at the house, and I guess we find out very quickly that Hill seems to have a bit of a thing for Megan. Which is really gross. My esteemed colleagues, capable, beautiful, loving daughter. That is extremely cringy. Not, I'm not. I mean, the dinner party is kind of bad. Like, well, it's weird. It's just it's the like, three of them, and it's like a fancy kinda, dinner uh, talking about. Yeah. And I'm not. It's nothing to do with like the age range or anything. It's the way Dr. Hill is like saying things to her in front of her dad. And it's a little bit the age range. I mean, I mean yeah, but you know what I mean. But she's, I get, she's old enough to make her own decisions by then. But at the same sure. time, in front of, like, I feel like if my dad was there, he would have said something. Like, my dad has, like, a zero tolerance for that stuff. Well, unless they're, like, kidding around. But you know what I mean? But that would have been sure. so strange. Unless the dean thinks he can't say anything because it is his biggest grant winner. 
I don't know. That's, that's going too much into character. Or maybe that's. I, I think. Well, I think he kind of has an idea. Like he can kind of string this guy along and keep him happy sure. by having him, letting him have dinners with the daughter there. I don't think he'd ever let anything proceed any further. Yes. Ever. But, but still, he's still like I would not want anybody talking to my. I don't. He doesn't like go over the line really, but you can just tell. Yeah. And it's got like that creepy, weird. Like, all right, you're about ready to cross the line, and I'm not here for it. Yeah, yeah, and of course, none. He's not too pleased that she's dating Kane, who lives with West now. Yeah, his arch nemesis. Which, how do these people know that he's living with West now? I mean, I mean, Megan might have told her dad, but like, it's like common knowledge now. Like, oh, West and Kane. I don't know. I yeah, because I know. I mean, West seems to never leave his room at this point. But <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know how. Word gets around. It's a small. That's true. I mean. I assume that it's a small group of people. And, and like, Wes has obviously made a name for himself in the classroom. I'm like sure we'll get around that. Yeah, that. Yeah, if that happened, I mean, yeah, there's yeah. word would get around, yeah. especially with him challenging Hill like that. Yeah. Like anything Wes does, people will want to know or need to know it's or true. whatever. And uh, yeah, like I said, you said Megan probably, probably offhandly well mentioned something. But yeah, Megan's suspicious of Wes and how his doors always closed, never seems to eat. And Kate's got Rufus is apparently terrified of Wes. And then immediately they realize that. Where is Rufus? 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 Like I love her little. Like she does this little cat. But once again, we have the movie where it's like that darn cat. <sighs> like it doesn't go where it usually goes in these movies. But she goes into West's room uh, with Kane looking somewhere else and sees the college standard mini fridge. Even in the mid eighties, I thought the mini fridge was like maybe nineties at best. But the mini fridge is there yeah. and strong. And, and has open, a bit really? and open, which I'm just like, that's not very effective to yeah. keep things cool. Um, but a very dead Rufus is in it, as well as the liquid from way too many glow sticks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I was like, oh, never. So much glow Run stick away liquid. from neon green liquid. It is always bad. <laughs> Probably. And I'm just like, I, I was trying to remember because I don't, I was like, I, I don't really, I don't have time to go through any bonus features right now, but. Did they actually break open glue sticks to make this they, stuff? They probably did. That's what it looks like. Because the problem is you can't really, I don't know how you light it with black lights and have that color without black lighting everything else everything around else. it. Um, Unless they had time. like a glue stick and like a something, I don't know, something in it, like a mini black glue stick, black light glue stick in there. Oh, but it would have to, it'd have to be really, because you have to overexpose it to get a glow. Sure. Like you're already something really powerful. So I'm not even sure how well they ever that glow. It's pretty wild. It's, it's cool. Yeah, no, I really love cool. my favorite color green. So yeah. There you go. <laughs> I love um, reanimation green. That's gonna be my favorite. <laughs> That's gonna be my my go to now. <laughs> so West immediately shows up. He's not happy about the privacy intrusion, uh, and claims the cat suffocated was dead and West found it. But Megan thinks West killed the cat because the cat hated him. Well and I mean, he he says that the cat suffocated by knocking over the trash can and getting its head stuck in a stuck jar, in a jar <laughs> and suffocating. This is a pretty elaborate story. And then he goes on and it's like he's poking the bear like, what, you want me to leave you a note? Like your cat died. Details later. And I was just like, man, wrong field, Dr. West. You should have been a lawyer. Like, seriously. Oh, no. He immediately he an like, goes the offensive and it's just like, how dare you? Like. You'd rather I just left you a note yeah. and be a heartless jerk? Sorry, I was trying to keep him fresh in my fridge for you so we could have a proper burial in case you wanted to sing some songs, have some hymns, something. Like, he, like, he seriously has an answer for everything. Oh, absolutely. No, it's, it's and brilliantly played by Combs. And I'm surprised the guy who plays the lead, like, Kane, I mean, he's probably a good actor. Like, I really yeah. felt for him, like, for his dead cat. Like, yeah. he actually cares about the, the thing. Absolutely. And so now Wes blackmails Kane with his knowledge that Kane and Megan are sleeping together, which works. Um, Which, I mean, you probably shouldn't do to your roommate. I was sort of like, man, that's not a good way to start a friendship. And it's he's never, not looking for friends. That's true, but it's never really brought up again either. But then again, this is before. Anyway. It, I, I feel like he does kind of occasionally bring it up again, though, of just like, eh, you know. Oh, uh, he, he actually Kane does. You are right. He's like, I'm out. You are. Are you, though? <laughs> you like, right. you know. So, so Kane wakes up that night with cat shrieks. He goes exploring with a baseball bat. Good for you, grabbing mm -hmm. the bat. Uh, Rufus is attacking West, and slapstick ensues as they try to kill it. Kane! <laughs> Lane does land the killing blow after Rufus knocks him across the room. Rufus knocks him across the room. It's awesome. Uh, and uh, and then we get a glimpse of West's insanity as he just giggles yes. against the wall. Like it's like, whoa, dude. Okay. And this is when you find out what exactly that green glowing substance is. 
and Kane is baffled by it. And actually, they don't even, he doesn't believe him at first. So, which I thought this was probably the grossest part to me. I'm a huge animal lover. But he's like, let me show you. After the cat is dead again, he gives like, it well, more. Well, he says, do you agree with me this cat, this cat is, is dead. dead? Yes. He, like, verifies the cat is dead. It's mangled. It's head been bashed into a wall. All of that stuff. Like, he gives his back's broken, so don't expect him to do any dancing. <laughs> yeah, and he's just kind of nonchalantly talking about this. Gives him more of the reanimation agent, the reagent, and the cat starts like Rah! shaking and just yeah, and like yeah. freaking out, which hysterical, hysterical puppeteering or whatever that it's was. So good, it's so disconcerting though. Like yeah. it's obviously a puppet, but it's like oh, it's so gnarly. And so like... yeah, and then but how does he kill the cat again? They never show that. Oh, they, they don't just need kind of to. like go back. I mean, it's, it's yeah, you know, it's it's just whatever. Do it again, kill the brain, you know, kind of thing. Um, and I love the line. Why does it make that noise? Birth is always painful. <laughs> oh my god! It's so um, and the proud effects are just wild. And then Megan, Megan shows up randomly right behind them, just yeah. like didn't hear her walk down the stairs. She no, the night she got she got a vibe that something yeah. was wrong. But she wasn't in bed with Kane. I didn't see that. I, I didn't saw. see it. Yeah. So. And, I mean, if she was, she would have woken up to that. I mean, he woke up to it. You would think that she would have woken up to the horrific cat, like, right. freak out. Or Dan would have been like, hey, hey, where are you? Okay, yeah. stay here. Stay like, here. Like, if she case. wasn't there, like, if she was in the house, but, you know, There's had gotten murder. up to the restroom or something. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so Kane tells the dean uh, what Wes can do, but the dean doesn't believe him and, and, and is angry that Megan's involved, like, at all. Yeah. Um, and so he demands an apology. Threatens criminal charges of university equipment was used. And Kane will have a student loan taken away regardless. I mean, can the school do that? Like, I don't you can, think... You can say you're kicked out of the school, but I don't think they can take away your loan no. unless they're the one doing the loan, which isn't that a scholarship? Yeah. Like, we'll take away your scholarship? Uh, but I... without loans, Kane will be able to continue in med school, which means no Mary Megan, because she won't marry a non-MD. Um, Gross. So that just sucks um, <laughs> for him. But, I mean, good for Kane because he is still allowed to be in school. Just can't afford just it. Just can't so afford it. He knows that. Well, it, it, he, he basically knows I'm killing a medical career and your chances with my daughter. You're welcome. Well, but he says he will do that if he continues with Wes. He didn't go ahead and do it. Oh, I thought he was taking away his loan regardless. No. I thought he said regardless, I'm taking away your student loan. And that's why Kane now doesn't care. No, no. He just did that with Wes. I didn't think so. Well, he, Kane, no, Wes is expelled. Yeah, so Wes, Wes is he's gone. expelled. Yeah. As for you, I'm taking away your student loan. Oh, I didn't catch I that. I'm pretty I, sure that that was, he's taking, he's not, I'm not kicking you out of school, but you're going to have to pay for it yourself. I, I thought that he was and saying that he, he, can't. he would do that because he was, because he said, no, I couldn't no. afford, he's like, I can't afford to go here then. Because that's what he's like. He's like, I can't afford. I can't afford this. Now. And he's like, sorry about you. Oh, see, I thought he's. No, yeah. it was. And then, was and a... then I thought that he kept going only because he was shown the reagent. He was shown that. Oh my gosh, this guy can bring things back to life. This can't stop. No, I think it's also that now he basically knows he's all for all intents and purposes he has been kicked out of medical school. Huh? Just not officially. He just now can no longer pay for it. Is way the way I took it. I don't know because it was like now we'll press criminal charges if you used equipment, but regardless, we're taking away your student loan. Oh. Is what I thought he said. I didn't catch that. Yeah, so I was like, oh gosh, that's harsh. <laughs> like, I like, could have just expelled him or something, which would have been bad enough to, to be like, I'm not going to expel you. I'm just going to take away your student loan, and you can just drown. <laughs> like, you can basically just know that I'm ba you, you, you basically just so you can basically. Find a job, try to work your way through medical school. <laughs> or you're gone. Either way, you're going to be toast. Because the hours of medical school and like doing residency, it looked like, Lucas, you have to do both there. Yeah, and it's you like, can't hold down like, a yeah, you, job you get, being able or, to, yeah, yeah, which is all you do to like, yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, Kane sneaks west into the morgue now that he has a little to lose at this point. Because that's what I was thinking. Like, the only way you would do that is if you had little to nothing. To, felt like you had nothing to lose at this point. I thought it was because he saw the cat come back to life again. But I think that's part of it. But, but then again, <laughs> but then again, he doesn't want to get caught. And so that's why I was just like, he said that basically he was going to be out of medical school. So why is he so afraid of getting caught? Like, is it now? Well, now they're using university equipment, I guess. So there would be criminal charges. But he wasn't caught. taking them out. I thought it was they had to take out the medical. Like, if you had been. But they're still using the university equipment in these experiments that are not allowed or they're not condoning this. This? I don't know. Because they're still. And it would be bad. <laughs> it would just be bad. If they got caught, it would be bad. Yeah. Um, 
So they look for a good candidate. They found one, may have heart damage. They want to see if there's any conscious signs after the grades administered. And now we, the, the dean also knows now that Kane's in the hospital. Uh -huh. um, says they need to leave. West refuses administer's reagent. It doesn't, nothing happens. I love that he says, or, uh, We need oh, to add more CCs to it. Well, no. <laughs> He's like, we failed. He failed, not I. Yes, like, yeah. Oh, so good. Like, I was like, man, Wes that's um, definitely has sort of a uh, sort of. He has a he's nothing but ego at this point. <laughs> like, um, yeah, I was like, wow, way to blame the dead yeah. guy. Like, he is so good at victim blaming and like shaming and like shifting. Like, it's just well, amazing. Which is another question that I raised because he was saying, well, then I need to get more CCs to him, CCs of the syringe of the reagent, right? Because he's a human and not an animal or anything like that, which he just did on the cat. But he reanimated Dr. Hans Gruber. So I was sort of confused by that. Like, okay, we've already reanimated a human, though. So why would... But how many CCs of that did he use? Because it seemed like to, if your head explodes like that, that you use too many That's CCs. That's true. I guess and that is true. And it was fresh. Like, Ooh, this yes. thing was fresh. He literally just had a heart attack there, allegedly. Which has a... Yeah. And he's a John Doe with no family. He's the perfect candidate, minus the bad part. And I'll know the dead guy gets up and he's a buffed out rage monster. <laughs> um... So Wes and Kane can't control him, and the teen shows up. The dead guy kills the teen before Wes uses the bone saw to take the dead guy out. That is gnarly. I mean, literally shoves that bone saw I right through the guy. I thought he was going for his head, so I was really surprised. Because, I mean, I'm thinking bone saw, which is what um, Dr. Hill did earlier. Well, it's a, a spinning disc. Yeah. And not something, it's like a Dremel tool. But he did it just Shoved yeah. the, the blunt end Straight through, through the back. Heart. <laughs> it, I'll... It looks cool. Yeah, yeah. Whether it could actually work like that, or I mean, I'm sure it could after some time. Yeah, but I mean, he's a scrawny dude. And there's a lot of muscle. That's true. And like bone, like ribs and things, to, like get through to do that. It's still an early effect. It and is kind of fun. So. It is. But then you realize that you know the dean has died. So what do you do when you have the chance to reanimate a the, super fresh body? Yeah, you have a super fresh body. You can do this. So he ends up using the reagent on the Dean. No, Kane agrees to help. Like, he's like, help me lift this body. And you see hesitation for a moment. And I, th I want to believe the only reason he did it is in the hope that Megan will get her dad back. I agree. That's a, all I can hope for at this point. Um, I'm hoping it's not just the, I want to discover this. See, I feel like, like I feel like it was almost like that in the moment. Oh my gosh, we killed somebody. Oh, we have a way to fix it. I can make my fiance's dad come back. Like I feel like he wasn't thinking logically about, oh, we just did it to this guy and look what happened to him. You know what I mean? Right. And it's like, well, this guy is just recently dead, so maybe it will work. Maybe, yeah. maybe this will be the time it won't be a hulking rage monster or a hissing cat. Um so and, Megan walks oh sorry. No, and the reason why we're saying that, which I'm sure we'll get to in the the special is because there is a lot of talk about freshman freshness in H.P. Lovecraft's tale of this. Freshness is a big thing of the human body. Which again, I was just delighted when I reread the the story. <laughs> just like, oh, they talk about freshness. It's awesome. Okay. I can't I can't believe how much translated over to this movie. They need some Mentos. It's the fresh maker. That's <laughs> holy. <laughs> You have no idea why that's funny yet, because we have not reviewed our next movie yet. I have. Oh, okay. And it's in my notes for the movie after this. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, no. it's That's hilarious. I have it in my notes multiple times for the next film, which I can't spoil for you right Don't now. Don't spoil it. That's really funny. Um, so Megan was told to stay at the nurse's station, but she walks away after the doctor's call that would have been keeping her there. Mm -hmm. And so the dean's been reanimated successfully. Megan shows up with a nice dolly back in the hallway. That's where I'm like, oh, I love the camera yeah. work. It's like, at first I thought it was like a, a Jaws, like rack focus thing, but it wasn't. I, I had to rewatch that scene. Why did they just rack focus? Because I'm such a nerd for that stuff. <laughs> this is with the Hitchcock tiles. I'm like, oh, this is a vertical pull. Anyway, <laughs> the, but they didn't. The uh, dean starts choking Kane and West, and it, I just think of like training principles. Like, it was the Dukes. It was the Dukes. I don't know, something like that. Um, so West makes up the excuse that the dean ran in acting crazy because once Megan comes in, the dean like freaks out and goes and huddles in a corner. So he well, says, and that, obviously that's not that's something that the dean of her school, her dad, would never do. Like, why is he huddling in a corner, almost whimpering, like making yes. like he's not making any guttural noises or anything. It looks like that he's like cow tailing, just like. He's freaked out. Yeah. Like he's yeah. absolutely freaked but out. It was weird because he just had this like rage and then freak out. When he saw Megan, like, I know this person and I don't know what's going on. And he's like, yeah, he's freaking yeah. out. He's like, yeah, he's not all there. But he kind of he recognizes but doesn't recognize. Yeah. And I think it's freaking him out. 
So then uh, he's, West Mealy has a story that Dean ran in acting crazy, grabs Bone Saw, mutilated the corpse, attacks him in Kane, and then West had come to visit, just come to visit come since to he visit knew Kane friend. was working. Yep. And, uh, and they seem to buy the excuse. I mean, the guard seems to, at least. Love the guard. The guard, man. He's the most <laughs> ineffective guard, but he's awesome. He's great. Uh, you know, I, <laughs> So then Hill has the Dean in a straitjacket under observation. He believes the problem is neurological and has Megan sign a release so Hill can research what is going on. And, um, yeah. and I like that he, I was like, oh, he tries to tell Megan what he's going to do. Like, here's what I'm going to do exactly. And I was like, I kind of actually appreciated that. They at least seem to want to be trying to explain to her, this is my exact plan for how I'm going to deal with him. But she says she doesn't want to know. Which maybe, I was like, but was he banking on that? Because I mean, he probably knows her well enough to know that she doesn't want to hear talk of like that stuff. Maybe, but then it's just like you know. Then again, Doctor Hill he crosses that line again. Where right afterwards, right after he's talking about it, he had what he wanted. She signed every like, or did oh, she sign or what? She didn't have signed everything. Yeah, wanted. but that's what I mean. Like, like you got what you wanted with the deed. Yeah, and all of a sudden he starts getting not handsy but wordy with her like oh he won't let her talk to her dad yeah. and Cavander's saying that he wants her to think of him as someone she can talk to about her problems or she's lonely or she's lonely and, and I was she, just like since I know you're all alone now and I'm just like dude yeah, gross yeah how creepy is that I know that your dad's dude. here and you're living alone and oh, oh, if oh. anybody says that to you run away again we're giving you so many helpful life tips on this show oh gosh run away oh, oh. um I mean, that was grosser than any of the makeup effects in this movie, and this yeah. movie's gross. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, but it gets worse. I mean, oh my gosh. But well, we'll but get then there. all of a sudden, Megan rescinds her offer, and she's just like, I want to take my dad home with me. Right. But I, he never leaves. Then it, like, cuts away. Yeah, it's like secure. It, or, well, no, she says, I'm going to find out what's going on. Oh, and then and take leaves, my dad home with and me. I, well, well, I don't hear that. But, yeah, not, then yeah. she's going to find out what's going on, so then she can get her dad out. Okay. Because I think he's been committed to Hill's care, okay. but she wants to find out what really happened so she can get him out of that situation and get him to somewhere else for whatever Because she needs. says, she literally says, like, never mind. He is going to come. Maybe he's going to. He's going to come with me and I will take but care of him. she's already signed the release. Yeah, so. so unless she snatched it and tore it up or Which whatever. you don't really see, but he looks like, he's like, oh, great. Like, he looks upset by it. But they're in the middle that, of talking about this when the dean headbutts the glass. And saves Megan from having to respond to all his creepiness. Yes. Um, and then she vows to find out what happens herself and get him help. Um, he's not happy about the interruption and has orderly to walk in to subdue her dad. Mm -hmm. And we don't see what happens at that point. Um, then Megan confronts <laughs> Kane, who tells her that he's not insane. Uh, her dad, dad, that is. He's dead. Mm -hmm. Like this, a good bedside manner, Kane. And also, really good slapping technique, Megan. Yes, that's <laughs> twice. I'm like, good for you, Megan. All right. Tell me what happened to my father. Yeah. Well, King does offer to tell her everything. Yes, he actually, King is a good guy. Like, I feel like he's, anyway. He just bad influences. Yeah, him. yeah. He's just a little bit of a follower. I mean, I understand that. But he also has this urge, like, to cheer death. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's obvious from the opening that he wants to <laughs> save everybody. Exactly. He, he save people from death. All people from death and, forever. Why wouldn't he want that? Yeah. And um, I think he's kind of blinded the fact that it ain't working. No, obviously. it ain't working. Um, so then Dr. Hill pays West a visit because he's figured out that the dean is dead, and Hill wants to complete credit for West's discovery, threatening to have him deemed insane. And West turns over his notebook, which I thought was kind of a little too easy for Mr. Herbert West. Yeah. He he he, he yeah. turned over his notebook a little too easily, even though yeah, like. You know, I'll make people think that you're a mad scientist and discredit you. And I'm like, okay, but no matter what, even if he does that, he still wouldn't have your work. So now you're already going to be discredited by handing over your work. Not yeah, discredited, but at least he can technically still be free to pursue to do whatever. stuff on and his own. I just, just didn't feel like that was very Herbert West-ish of him. And he kind of like shrinks down. I was sure too. that wasn't going to go anywhere. <laughs> um, yeah, Kane and Megan go to see the Dean, but we cut back to see Hill and uh, seeing West's discovery as brilliant. And while Hill is too busy admiring the reagent's effect on the tissue under a microscope, West proceeds to decapitate Hill with a shell. Great. So now uh, West is a total murderer, but under circumstances that we can be mildly okay with because Hill is awful. <laughs> well, and I also find it funny. So he has his head, his decapitated head, and he's putting it in a pan and it keeps falling up. over. <laughs> And then, what, I don't the, know what he puts on The receipt, like, punch or whatever, like, the I just saw a spike, kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, and then he just sticks it on there, like, 
yeah. and stares it's at so, it. And the gruesome sound effects. Yeah. So I mean, just great. But then what does a mad scientist such as Mr. Herbert West do when you have a dead body and a head? You know, he starts going, hmm, I haven't tried this on parts. Yeah. Parts? I've never parts. done whole parts. Man. So he grabs the reagent and he puts it in the head and the body. That's right. And uh-oh, Hill's head can still control Hill's body. Dun, dun, dun. And the body knocks out West. I love the fact, too, that in most scenes with the whenever he's doing the reagent, you see, you see Herbert West hitting people with a pencil. Have you noticed that? He oh, was, yeah. like, hitting him in the head with the pencil, and he was doing it to the other guy, too. Like, he's, like, count, I don't know if he's counting the minutes, like, keeping... He's got a pencil thing. He I guess has maybe. a tempo. Yeah. But, yeah, and all of a sudden, you, you see Dr. Hill's eyes open, and he kind of talks at first. He he just, he, like, hiss talks. Like, West. Ew. Oh, it's so good. And then, oh, and then so you gnarly. see, like, just his body going up, and... Blackout, Mr. West. Yeah, which I'm just like, you didn't kill him? Like, I, I don't know. Yeah, I thought that was weird. Too, I guess but... you wanted him to witness whatever you're going to do, but how do you even have a plan yet? You were literally just reanimated. And... I was going to say, he's freshly reanimated. Maybe he's not fully cognitively there yet. But the fact that he can just automatically control his body enough to, like, knock out West in a blow, I, I'm not entirely clear on... What the, if it's a difference of will? I have to believe it's a difference of will. Maybe, um, yeah. Because he does talk about will later. But it's one of those things where it's just like, okay, so this guy had an idea, like, had studied some of this stuff, and then wakes up, he has a better idea of, like, what's going on to him. Yeah. And all I can figure is that that's what's going on. Plus, he had reagent in his head and his body, and his body. so that extra reagent, maybe. Well, that was something else, too. So when you do, which this could be too much thought again for a movie such as this, but when he puts reagent in the head and in the body, so is that really two different resurrections? But he can control his body. There's a psychic link. Or is it literally like his body is, has, like you were saying, has its own will, but just his head. I, is, I have to believe there's like a Wi-Fi psychic link going on between uh -huh. the head and the body, the way this is posited, and that he's commanding his body with a, through mental gymnastics Something. somehow, um, which is weird. It makes no sense, but I love it <laughs> because basically this this headless body is carrying around the head in a pan, which is just, uh, or in a bag. Or in which, a bag, which uh, one head in a bag. It's immediately what I thought instead of eight heads in, in a duffel bag. That was on Hoopla. If it ever comes back, maybe we'll do we, that we need to do that I've one. never seen it because when it came out, I was like, this looks terrible. No, we need to do that one. It's oh, great. We'll it's see. great. We'll see. Um, so now Megan goes through Dad's room while Kane goes through files. And Kane discovers the creepy Megan file that Dr. Hill has been keeping with hair. and That is a long strand of hair. Alarm, and, like... Like, he walked into her room while she was sleeping, just, yeah. and, uh... And we found out he's got, like, napkins of hers, and just... Lord knows what. This is more, you know, we we always had that feel like you're really creepy towards her. This took it to another level. Like This is he, next level... You, like, you need to be arrested. Yeah. Um, yeah, so... Kane discovered... Oh, and they, they discovered that he'll use the laser drill to lobotomize her dad... And, um, which and is terrible. Made him extremely more He's docile. docile, yes. Yeah. Um, so that West wakes up to discover that Hill's taken all his work. And then West confesses to Kane that he had to kill Hill and reanimate him. I will say, though, during the scene when West first wakes up and all of his work is scattered, they did a really good job at making it seem like it wasn't just a... We're destroying stuff. It looked like a human body, actually, like was swinging its arms and trying to pick stuff <laughs> That's up. True. That's what I thought. And I was just like, great job, because it was just a... Headless body trying to grab stuff around. And he's still the room. learning how to control it. I didn't yeah. think about that. That's actually yeah, true. Yeah, everything kind of looks swept around and like semi broken, but not like haphazardly broken. Not someone just trying to destroy stuff. I thought that was a good little, a good, a good little tidbit. <laughs> and then Wes continues his blatant, like just anything. He'll say anything to get his way of just like, and and Doctor Hill wanted you to disappear. Yeah, and just yeah. like, wait, what? I never heard that. I never uh, heard that you wanted to disappear. Dude! <laughs> dude! Hey, you need to have some chill, man. And it works for him, I guess. And so he says so he lobotomized the Dean so he can control him and his discovery. Um, so yeah, so Hill carries his head back to his office and gives himself another dose of serum. And it's just... As well as some blood in a, a mini pan? fridge. In a mini fridge, yeah. Why does he have blood in a mini fridge? I mean, it's his office. I know he's a medical doctor, but isn't that kind of a weird thing? Like, 
they just have some random blood samples in like bags. Yeah, it wasn't even like a blood sample, like a blood vial I could blood see. Bag, it's yeah. like a huge blood bag. And because it's such a great thing of having it, he squirts it in there. into the thing. And, and he's, he's just, just like, oh. it's like bubbling. Yeah. And it's just like, it's such a great but, thing. And of, then it's so weird too, because then he immediately picks up his head. And I was like, oh, he only got his blood bath for like 0.5 seconds. Well, what's circulating that blood into his head? How is he breathing? Where's his vocal cords? <laughs> like, which that? part of his neck are those in? Like, he was in the bag. Why is he breathing? Yeah, and he, and he like they no unzip the bag and he's like, ah, oh, much better. I'm like, what? What do you mean much and you better? Hear him have Darth Vader breathing. I'm just like, I don't know how you not have him breathe and have it like work because it just wouldn't have felt natural or right if he was talking without breathing True. or like if they figured out how. He could force wind through his windpipe or something. I don't know. He doesn't even have a windpipe anymore. That's what I mean. Which part of the windpipe is his wind or I don't know. is in his body still? If it was through the body, that'd be kind of fun. Yeah. He could talk through his body still, but it was it was strictly through his I, I don't know. What would that even sound like? But anyway, we're thinking too hard about this. It's just a lot of fun. <laughs> um they do a cool reflection trick. Because he looks in the window through the dean, like they head over to the that dean, was super cool. and it's like you see the dean, and then superimposed. Now you have like the head, and so that way it's like you could you could still have the guy, the actor there, and they have, have it in such a way that he's it's lit, so it looks like it's just his head. It's just such a nice, cool effect. That was a very it's good so effect. unsettling of yeah. like he, he's impo and it's like it the imposing his will on this guy. He's projecting himself literally onto this guy. Like it's just such an artful. They didn't have to do that. No, and no. The technique. I mean, the technique of like the head there for the effect through the two-way glass, and then, the glass then like having the, the the subtext of him superimposing his will yeah. on the dean. So cool. Yeah, no, they did a very good job of it. That, that, yeah. that's, that's one of the reasons why this movie just holds up, <laughs> and it's just really nice to see that. So anyway, um, and then you get is this where you get wax face hill? Yes, yeah, sneaks into the more, but no worries. The garden is enjoying some literature. I was dying when I saw that. I was just cracking up. And I love the fact that, like, you see an eardrop to the floor, and they make, like, note of the eardropping, showing a scene or a clip of the ear on the floor. And he doesn't even. What is say it, Dr. Anything. Hill? Yeah. Of course it's me. And it's really muffled. Yeah, ignore the mic. It sounds like I'm in a bag. <laughs> yeah, and he's just like, whatever. And then as soon as he walks in, he's just like, time for my break. Break time. And I just like, oh, away. dude. I know. I Come know, on. It's great. Yeah, oh. I love the security guard. He's in the film for maybe cumulatively one minute, but I love it. It's a funny excuse to have the guard away for, yeah. for them to like do what they're going to do there. So Kane goes to Megan, who's been thinking a lot in a short amount of time. I mean, it's been like minutes hours and she's like yeah. i tried to hate you like it's been a month i tried to hate you but i couldn't i can't quit you and i'm just like it's been like 30 minutes yeah Megan, like, she's working through those emotions really quickly i know you just found out your father's lobotomized <laughs> and that this dude had a creepy file on you he's really dead and like all this stuff I like can't. like i get that it's been a lot but you I, yeah, yeah no. it was a little it was a little bunch of a reach it was I do appreciate the soap opera-ness of the whole, I tried to hate you. <laughs> I really did. Um, but anyway, but then the Dean shows up to take Megan and bring her to Hill and spare us from any more awkwardness with the yeah. bat. So then Hill's using the laser to, at the time, I think, and I was right, create a zombie army, um, which is pretty cool. The Dean arrives with Megan, mm -hmm. which works because the guard took a break. Again, it's not like anyone's going to stop. Everybody's going to stop him. Like, why are you carrying the Dean? Why are you carrying your daughter into the... Autopsy. Yeah, room. which is another thing too that I thought was weird because the dad obviously cowered when he saw Megan. He cowered like, but he's carrying her to her demise, and he. But he's been lobotomized. That's so, true, but like, still, like he he like rips her shirt off. He rips or, all the clothes off. Yeah, it's just like, oh, dude, that's your daughter. Like, it's it's so awful. But, like, uh, but he does go and like stand far back afterward. So I was like, okay, so maybe this is like the brunt of like you are being controlled. Well, he's, he was told to do that and then walk away. And walk away. And just hills look. Ugh. It's just so. This was the worst. It's so part. gross. He's in like the blood pan. Ugh. He's just leering at Ugh. her. And it's just so gross. And Barbara Crampton, kudos to her for being game for just this gross. But I don't like the fact that she gets one arm free 
And she doesn't immediately go to unstrap her other arm or her legs or anything. She's just like pushing his head oh. away. Oh, and, like, but she's barely doing like. Ugh, ugh, ugh. And I'm okay. like, I Leah, see. Leah, think of. I mean, <laughs> I'm not in that situation, but she's laying there naked while a, a headless body I, carrying the head is like over her assaulting her okay so you have a fight or flight instinct she had neither because her fight was <laughs> and like she didn't even like try to like forcefully push with her one hand and she also didn't try to flee i didn't think she was loose i thought she was still bo- bo- no, arms she, were down. she had one hand while he was like there well, but she was shackled but she couldn't get away she, one but arm, she could move it no one arm broke completely free she I didn't had notice one that. arm completely free during that whole time, like that whole scene. But her legs were strapped. Her legs and were her strapped in one arm. But I was like, dude, I don't care if there's a headless body or not. I'm going for my other arm. Like, I'm going to undo my other arm and not just sit there. And like, she like taps his forehead but before you can't he like. the psychological factor of a true severed. I've head never had a headless man come at me. Like that. I mean, just the whole horror show of that whole thing. I don't know what that would do to a person. True. Or what their psychological makeup would have to be to have the presence of mind to free themselves. True. But at the very least, like, you would have constantly, I feel like, pushed his head away. And she, like, well, lightly she taps of... it. Like, she's like, mm, mm. Well, like, partially because she didn't want to ruin the makeup effect or <laughs> That it. is true. You don't want to dislodge any of the latex appliances. <laughs> I mean, that is true. so let's pretend that that was bigger resistance than it appears. I think the I actress was trying not to ruin the makeup effect that may have been held on by like some spirit gum or whatever and would have fallen off had she like had really, she really shoved it? the head. Um, that is true. So, didn't think about you that. You know, I mean, let's give her a little bit of credit. That is true. But. I mean, before it got super nasty, dun dun dun, enter Kane and West. It got gnarly enough, Leah. No, it's true, but it about got real nasty. Uh, yeah, so yeah. But see. I love the fact that um, Dr. Hill does not see Kane. He does not see Daniel. He only sees West. West takes up the entire West, room and he like... West makes it clear that he's there. I am yeah, here. Pay and, attention to me. Don't ignore what's going on in the background. I appreciate that he did that even though he still manipulated Kane again. Yes. At least he had the like, I'm going to have him focus on me. Not realizing. I love that it's like, don't worry, I have a plan. So do I. I know. Oh, it's so good. And yes, it turns out his Undead Army now awakens. Board of the Reanimated. Oh, it's so cool. And tags oh. all three of them. Um, so there's a lot of lobotomies allowing total mastery of the human will. Um, Megan's able to get through to her dad, at least. And yeah. the, de- the dean helps her. He headbutts Hill's head, headbutting the head. I really like that. And then later crushes it. And then West decides to test the theory, overdose! Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. I, I literally, I was like, did he just scream overdose? Is that really what he did? And he just plunges Two syringes. so much, so much reagent. And then he like pulls his, his body. He yeah. pulls his eyes. Like he's like gouging his eyes out too. And all the other horde, like all the other reanimated, are are grasping their eyes. So is that what the will does? Like, can they all feel that also? I think that it's along the lines of like their he's his mind control, control is like either being disconnected, and so now they're freaking out because they're losing okay. the mind control, or they're freak, and now they're like with their own minds, which is like what's happening to me, or is it that he's just going through psychological turbulence because his head's be literally being crushed. And they're f- that they're freaking out because their head hurts. Like I didn't his. know if it was like a subliminal, like what he feels, they feel. I think that's probably more what's going um, on. But um, yeah, but it was. But I, either way, it's really cool. Like they, this whole part of the movie is super neat. I oh think. yeah, I know the makeup effects like, are good. Yeah, there's makeup. There's makeup effects. Like the there's actors just, are naked. Like they probably would be if they were. Yeah, in a they morgue, were in a morgue and, like, and they're like freaking. And they're just out. like it's. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's um. Yeah. And so then intestines pop out of Hill's body and wrap around West, and the Dean's torn apart <laughs> by the, the the army. But Kane and Megan can escape with West's notes, which I'm just like, leave the notes, burn them. I know. Like, can I say a side story just super quickly? The intestine part going out and it's like snaking at him, and it grabs a hold of West, and he's screaming at them. That night, I woke up to my cat's tail hanging off oh, the no. nightstand, uh, doing this in front of my face, and I freaked oh, no. out. I'm sorry. I freaked out. I thought my cat's tail 
was Dr. Hill's intestines coming at me. Oh, <laughs> no. Oh, that's not fun. But, I mean, afterwards, it's kind of hysterical where I was like, D.O.G., why are you doing that to me? Why, why are you messing with me? Why? Uh, no. You watch this with me. <laughs> uh, and you hope they're going to get away, but they don't. Before uh, King can rescue Megan from the zombie choking her out, uh, Another part where I was like, dang on it, because he goes and he grabs an axe in order to get chop yeah. the arm off of the guy choking her. But for some reason, he doesn't go to their, his back. He, like, runs in and shoves the elevator door while... Because he's trying to get a good angle to get the, chop the hands. But then again, these zombies are tough. Like, yeah, one hit true. might be enough to just get him knocked off, and he, then he and won't then get another shot well, in. Yeah, I would have gone straight for, like, the back of the head, because then he wouldn't have even hit Megan, which he didn't. I'm not saying that he did, but I feel like yeah, if that close of an angle, he could hit her. Be a better yeah, idea. I just would have gone straight for the back of the head. He hadn't seen enough movies. It's 1985. I gotta watch I mean, these horror so films. Many, only so many had come out. I mean, he already had Night Dawn of the Dead, and I think Day of the Dead at this point, too. I think that was like 83, so... I guess there really wasn't an excuse. He should have been to the movie theater. Yeah, more. exactly. But uh, anyway, why else do we do this? We're all pairing. But now uh, she's dead, and they have a repatriation the opening scene, and nothing can save her. Uh, he's and so, trying to give her the chest yeah, impressions. Yeah, and this time her. he feels like he's got to stop, and they leave him to grieve, and he gets out the serum. I'm like, dun, no, dun, dude, dun, don't dun. do it. And then he injects her. It fades to black with just the green of the serum as it disappears. We hear her scream yep. and credits roll. It's like, oh, it's like the perfect end of this movie. It oh, is, my god! It was actually very good. It was a very good way to end this movie. Oh, yeah. Because you see that, I mean, he loved her. and But he, you feel like that he should understand the madness of all of it. You, you know that you're not going to get the real her back. But maybe he thought, because yet again, she freshly died. I mean, she literally freshly died. So, I don't know. Have you seen Pet Sematary? I have. The original? No, I have not. You haven't seen the first one? I've only seen the remake. Ah, okay. Never mind. No, okay. <laughs> no, no, wait, wait. I'll watch it. It was very... The ending of that movie reminded me a lot of the ending of this. Oh, okay. Degree. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so wow. I mean, this, the practical makeup effects in this movie, the senior tune performances, the craftsmanship of the various shots and techniques, I mean, they really make this movie. They did. Like, it's one of those things where this is a reason why this movie still just hangs around of just like people enjoying it. I agree. And I mean, like you said before, it definitely stands the test of time. You d you never really know what era it is in the movie. Like it's not a clear. Yeah, some of the effects really like sometimes the color of the blood is like super orange. You're like, oh, it's the seventies or like yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they did a very good job at holding this up. They and, and yet again, you know that it's going to be kind of one of those. It's not B rated. I don't want to say that, but. It's I mean, not, it's got a cheese ball. Yeah, kind of, it's like, yeah, kind of like playfulness. Like you know that the, the gore isn't. They're trying to be like super on point. Like no, this is really what it it's looks not like. It's not torture porn realistic. Yeah, like, yeah, it's 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 good. Like it's actually it's like okay, so you're trying to be kind of funny. You're also it's a horror movie. It just right. it holds up. It was very very well done in that aspect. Absolutely, it's got. I mean, you're gonna be like horrified, but then you're also gonna laugh. Yeah, and it's kind of nice to have that push and pull, that comedic relief, which is what it was. I told you I'd say it in the, during right. this comedic relief. Well, if you want more, Brian Yosna, the producer of this movie, um, he picked up the directorial reins for 1990s Bride of Reanimator, which you can check out for free on Canopy as of this recording. And he also kept it going in the direct to DVD era with Beyond Reanimator, which you can check out free on Hoopla. Um, I've seen them both, and while both are inferior to this original film, uh, they're still gonzo flicks, if that's your jam. I do have a quick question about Brian Reanimator. Does it pick up where we left off? I almost need to rewatch it just to remember. That's okay. But Jeffrey Combs is in all the films. So, so okay. somehow he, I guess, extricates himself from... The pit of despair. From no, the intestines or whatever chemicals were spilling out. I don't yeah. know. I was just kind of like, okay. And uh, yeah, any other thoughts on Reanimator? No, you should watch it though. I, I'm surprised that I lasted as long as I did without seeing it. And it was. I was going to say without like passing out from the. No, the no, 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 no. Or... Even though, you know, within the very first five seconds when you see. You'll know if this movie's Doctor... for you or not. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you definitely will. Um, but when you see Dr. Hans Gruber, not Alan oh, Rickman. Yeah. When you see him, you know, go through his being reanimated and it not working properly, I, I was like, okay, 
it's going to not be for the faint of heart. Like if, right. if, if you cannot do blood or guts or anything, it is over the top. Like we were saying, it is oh, not yeah. realistic. It's a little bit over the top, but yeah. And there is sexual salty yeah. type stuff. So if, again, if that's, yeah, don't watch it if that it, is it's triggering. Yeah. 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 That's uh yeah. Definitely avoid that. But yeah, yeah. otherwise it's a high recommend for me yes. for sure. And now here is Clucifer with the clue for the next movie adaptation we will be covering. Clucifer here. Your clue for the next film is virtual reality is the future of all lawn care. Thanks, Clucifer. Phil Evergrande, I'm Jesse. And I'm Leah. And uh, we will see you next Friday for our review episode. Bye.